Welcome to chapter 12 of the book of 1 Kings. Solomon has died. In the last chapter, we went through that and how he changed towards the end of his life, became an idolater. Pretty sad. Now his son, Rehoboam, uh, has become king of Judah and uh, of Israel. And I was thinking the last time, how do I remember Jeroboam and Rehoboam? And I finally came up with a little scheme. Uh, I, Israel, J, Jeroboam. And if it's Rehoboam and Judah, R, J, it doesn't fit. So it has to be two of them, two letters that are adjoining I, J, Israel, Jeroboam. So that helps you, honey. And Rehoboam, that was the son of Solomon, King Rehoboam went to Shechem. For all Israel came unto Shechem to give him rain. And it came to pass as Jeroboam, son of Nevat, heard of it, and he was still being in Egypt as he had fled from the face of King Solomon and settled in Egypt. And we found out that he was a very talented man, put over the um, tribute coming in to King so- uh, to, to Solomon, and Solomon uh, ex- exiled him, wanted to kill him, get rid of him, saw him as a threat, and he went into Egypt. So then uh, it says that they sent and called him. And Jeroboam, I.J., came and all the people uh, of Israel, that would be the northern people up in the north, uh, more or less central north, all, everything above Judah, basically. And Judah would have been where Jerusalem was in south. And the people spoke to King Rovoam, it's a Greek saying, Well, your pater, father, paternal, hardened our neck yoke. And now, and you now lighten from the hard servitude of your father and from his heavy neck yoke of which he put upon us and we will serve to you. That's interesting because we see in the last uh, chapter or so that all the people of Israel were not servants. They were made uh, put into the army and rulers of some sort. So now, but we see that uh, even though it says that, they didn't necessarily think that. They thought this was a lot of hard work. So exactly who it was talking about earlier, maybe just certain um, head people, not, not the normal man, because here they're saying uh, it was heavy, which he put on us. They had to serve all these people and uh, with foods and being sir, uh, uh, all sorts of things that they would have to do. And he said to them, Go forth three days, Emeron, Trion, try, and return to me. And they went forth. And King Rehoboam reported to the presbyteros, the elders who were standing before Solomon, uh, his father. So these were the elders. Presbyteros, we have the Presbyterian church uh, ruled by elders. And uh, while he was still living, saying, Well, how do you counsel that I should answer to this people a word? And they spoke to him, saying, Well, if in this day you should uh, you will be a bondman to this people and should serve them and shall speak to them good good words, then they will be to you bondmen all the days. Be gentle with them, and they will follow you. And he abandoned the counsel of the elders, which they advised him, and took up advice with the young men being brought up with him, standing before his face. Now, do all young men give bad advice and only old men give good advice? Well, no, we know that's not the case. But these men here, uh, the elders, they had a lot of experience. Experience 
helps in deciding things. If you've experienced something that's very painful over and over again and someone wants to do whatever that was and you told them, no, it's very painful, uh, you shouldn't do that, and yet they decide, well, it sounds good, then, you know, we want to do that, and they don't take your the advice and they go after whatever they want. And basically, the young men here were pressuring him uh, to stand up against these people up north, giving him bad advice. But why? It continues here and it tells us, and he said to them, well, what do you advise and what should I answer uh, to this people? Speaking to me saying, lighten up the neck yoke, which uh, your father put upon us. And they spoke to him, the young men, having been brought up with him, and they said, Thus you shall speak to this people speaking to you, saying, Your father oppressed our yoke, neck yoke, and you now lighten it from us. Thus you shall say to them, Well, my thinness is thicker than the loin of my father. Well, uh, the meaning of this is it's an insult. Uh, I'm going, I, my father, what I, whether my father does, I'm going to do uh, more. I, I am in control, basically. And it's using uh, the, um, the male uh, sex organs, one of them, and I'm not going to, I don't think it's necessary for me to point out which one, but basically this is uh, what it's referring to, a sort of a man talk. And now my father saddled you with a heavy neck yoke. And I will add unto your neck yoke. My father corrected you with whips, but I will correct you with scorpions. And make it worse. And Jeroboam came, that was from Israel, and all Israel to King Rehoboam on the third day, as the king spoke to them, saying, Return to me the third day. And the king, Rehoboam, answered to the people hard. And Rehoboam abandoned the counsel of the elders which they advised him. And he spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father oppressed your neck yoke, and I shall add to your neck yoke. My father corrected you with whips, and I will correct you with scorpions. And the king did not hear uh, the people, for it was a conversion by the Lord so that his word should stand, which he spoke by the hand of Ahijah, the Shilonite, over Jeroboam, son of Nabat, how he was going to uh, take ten tribes, give them to the northern kingdom with King Jeroboam. And uh, Ahijah gave Jeroboam of Israel the um, cloak that he had toward and twelve pieces and told him to take ten. And all Israel knew that the king Rehoboam hearkened not to them. And the people answered to the king, saying, oh, What's our portion with David? And there is, not an, there is not an inheritance to us with the son of Jesse. Run, O Israel, to your tents. Now, graze your own house, David. And Israel went forth to his tents up north. And the sons of Israel dwelling in the cities of Judah, gave rain to Rehoboam over them. And King Rehoboam sent Adoram, the one for collecting the tribute. And we earlier, remember, it was um, Jeroboam that was collecting the tribute and for Solomon. And all Israel stoned him with stones, and he died. And King Rehoboam, people don't like tax collectors. And King Rehoboam anticipated by ascending upon the chariot to flee into Jerusalem. He thought something might happen. And Israel annulled allegiance with the house of David until this day, whichever day it is, it was written. And it came to pass, as all Israel, the northern part, heard that Jeroboam returned from out of Egypt, that they sent and called him to the congregation. So now it's going back a little bit before this previous episode. And they gave 
him reign over Israel. And this is after the episode. And there was not one following after the house of David, except the chiefdom of Judah and Benjamin only. Moni, mono, mono only. It's a transliteration. And Rehoboam entered into Jerusalem, came back, and he held an assembly. Now you can add that to your English derivatives book. It's a verb for ecclesia, the assembly. Ex ecclesias, sai. He held an assembly of all the synagogues. Now we have both of them the ecclesia, the assembly, and the congregation. Interesting how they're almost synonymous. But the assembling is coming together. The congregation would have already been assembled. It's a congregation of people. And it's sort of a more formal entity than an assembly at, in the Old Testament. The New Testament, the assembly, becomes more formal than the synagogue, which is tied to the Jews. Or I, should, I, I told myself not to call them Jews because today they're really not. They're Israelites. Uh, they uh, are been cursed by God over the thousands of years. They've rejected Jesus. So they rejected the things of God. They're not uh, truly uh, Jews. Even and this is not something I'm coming up with. It's what Paul says. And uh, he entered Jerusalem and held an assembly of Judah and Benjamin, a hundred and twenty thousand young men for making war to wage war against the house of Israel, to go up north and to return the kingdom of Rehoboam, son of Solomon. So he gets these people together, talking, all warriors ready to go. Let's go. Let's go after them. And there came to pass the word of the Lord to Samaan, Shemaiah, the anthropon, anthropology, a derivative of God, saying, uh, Speak to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, saying, Thus says Kyrios, You shall not ascend nor wage war with your brethren of the sons of Israel. Polemisete, polem polemics, war of words. Let each return to his house, for from me, this thing has taken place, and they hearken to the word of the Lord and cease to go against the saying of the Lord. And Jeroboam up north, I.J., Israel, Jeroboam built Shechem and Mount Ephraim, which is not too far north of Jerusalem, and he dwelt in it. And he went forth from there and built uh, Phanuel, Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his cardia, cardiac, his heart, Behold now, the kingdom, uh, the kingdom shall return to the house of David. If this people should ascend to offer a sacrifice in the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, then the heart of the people shall turn towards their master, to Rehoboam, the king of Judah, because he's in Jerusalem, and they'll kill me. And the king consulted, thought about it, and he made two heifers of gold, uh, like cows. And he said, the young ones, and he said to the people, let it be enough for you to ascend to Jerusalem. Hold off. Let, here's something else. Behold, your gods, O Israel, the ones leading you from out of the land of Egypt, the same ones that Aaron had made when they were at, I think it was Peor, and uh, no, it was, at, it was at Mount Horeb, and then it, Moses came down and saw it, and, and uh, Aaron had made these, there were calves, here these are heifer, heifers, and they're bigger than a calf, but same thing. And he put the one in Bethel, which is down south of Israel, at that part of Israel, not Judah, and the other party put in Dan, way up north by Lebanon. And this account came to pass for sin. <laughs> and the people went after the one into Dan, the one up north, and he made houses upon the high places, and he appointed priests 
from any part from out of the people who were not from out of the sons of Levi, made up his own priesthood, his own gods, everything. And Jeroboam made a holiday feast in the eighth month, on the 15th day of the month, according to the holiday in Judah. So the people wouldn't miss going down to Jerusalem. They could go to these other places. And he ascended unto the altar, which he made in Bethel, to sacrifice to the heifers, which he made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places, which he made, or he appointed, I should be be better. And he, Jeroboam, ascended unto the altar, which he made in the fifteenth day, in the eighth month, in the holiday which he shaped out of his own heart. And he made the holiday for the sons of Israel, and ascended unto the altar to sacrifice upon it, apparently himself. Now, interesting story what happens next about this man of God. And to find out about this man of God and what happens to him, we'll have to join us again next video seminar. Until then, and God bless.